Let's start by taking a look at the changes made to the UI and preferences in X3 and the way the VST scanner works. The first thing you'll notice on startup is a new toaster pops up to inform you that the VST scanner is scanning, when it's finished and how many plugins it has found. In addition, the previous limit on plugin count has been removed and the number of plugins allowed is now unlimited. The scanner now has an automatic background scan mode which is on by default. In addition, X3 now supports the VST3 standard. Rater scanner control is available on the Preferences File VST Settings page, which has been updated to reflect the VST3 enhancements. Here you can adjust the settings and set the detection behaviour for any VST3 plugins that you have in your system. VST scan paths are set at the top in the same way as previous versions. The new automatic background scanning option can be changed using the drop down list. If the automatic option is selected, any plugins installed while Sonar is running are automatically detected and added to the menus as long as they are installed into one of the scan paths set at the top of this page. There's no need to run a scan or restart Sonar. The VST3 migration section controls how VST2s are treated if there is an equivalent VST3 version. The hide related VST2 option will remove the VST2 version from the menus and only display the VST3 version. The Replace VST2 option will check projects as they are open and automatically replace any VST2 plugins with their VST3 version. Uncheck this if you want to maintain the VST2 versions. Once the scanner is completed, effects and VSTs are now displayed and organised into default categories in the plugin manager and subsequently displayed that way in the browser and menus. Plugins are organised into four top level categories. They are VST3, VST2, DX, and Effects Chain, with VST3 sublevels defined by the plugin itself. If you want the VST3 plugin sorted by path, uncheck the Sort VST3 by Category option. Instruments are treated similarly, except there is no VST chain category. Effects Chains VST3 and VST2 contain their relative VST types, while DX covers some of the older plugins that use that format are included with Sona. It's still possible to custom organise plugin layouts using the plugin manager, accessed either from preferences or from the plugin tab of the browser. Furthermore, colour indicates whether a plugin is 32 or 64 bit. 32 bit plugins are displayed in green text, 64 bit in blue. Another small change is the way vertical scrolling works when using the middle mouse button. Previously, scrolling was by track increments, whereas it is now fractional. This means that there are no longer large jumps when vertically scrolling, and it's possible to display partial tracks at the top of the view. If you prefer the scroll to move per track, use the scroll arrows towards the right. The In Focus track or bus is now indicated by a background highlight on the track name field rather than a different colour track header. The reason for this change is that there is an all new track and bus colour selection system. You will also notice that clip headers are now blue. An audible clip has a highlighted blue header and coloured waveform. A muted clip has a dulled header and grey waveform. We will see this in use when we get to the new comping method. The track and bus strip colours can now be changed via a new widget available from both the track and console view. A change in one is reflected in the other. In the track view, the widget is found at the far left of the strip and can be accessed whether the track is minimised or expanded. In the console view, it is found at the very bottom of the strip. Click on it to reveal the colour change pop-up. From here, preset colours can be chosen and previewed by holding the mouse cursor over the relative colour box. A custom colour can be chosen using the custom button and reset to default by clicking on that option. The colour is applied to the track header and any existing clips on the track that haven't had a specific colour set using the clip inspector. The widget responds to quick grouping, so changing multiple tracks or buses at once is very easy. Just select the tracks or buses you wish to change and hold down the control key while choosing the required colour on one of them. A track can automatically follow the colour of its downstream bus by default. To choose that option, 
click and hold on the default button to reveal the submenu. This option can also be quick grouped. Once the option is set to follow bus, the track colour will change if the track output is changed to a different coloured bus. The colour preferences have also been completely reworked. Access those from Preferences, Customization, Colours. Choose your colour preferences from here and save them as a preset or export them to share them with another system. Colour schemes can be imported from here too. Another helpful addition is a graphic on the record button to indicate the current recording mode. The default mode is a new mode, Comping. Right click this button to open preferences or left click and hold to choose the recording mode. Basically this new mode is similar to the old sound on sound mode but with mute previous takes on. The graphic shows a short red line that represents recording above a dark grey line that represents existing material. A pattern section indicates the previous material muted. Overwrite is indicated by a red line that changes to a dark grey one and in this mode any recorded material replaces the existing material. Sound on sound is indicated by a red short line over a longer grey line. This signifies that old material is kept along with the new material, but in this case the old material is still audible. We'll look at the new comping tools and techniques in later videos. These changes are reflected in preferences. Open the project record page to see them there. On this page, the multi-track grouping options have been enhanced. As well as do not group tracks, there are options to group all clips and group only clips in folders. Using either of the latter two will automatically create clip groups for multi mic instruments such as when recording drums or acoustic guitar. The group only clips in folders will create clip groups on a per folder basis. Each folder will have its own group and if the tracks are not in a folder they won't be grouped at all. That's the main changes to the UI and preferences covered. Now let's move on to taking a closer look at some of the new and enhanced features.